how are we literally going to be university students in less than, well, like a month, when for me, two weeks? I don't know. And that's the end of today's episode. (laughs) So today's episode is going to be more focused on university so we've our previous episode was um reflections on high school so check that out Mm -hmm. this one is all about university because that's pretty much all that's on our minds right now yeah and for people listening berkeley admissions just opened today so if (laughs) i've inspired you or struck a chord please apply i didn't know that the due date for Cal application is actually earlier than a lot of the other ones is actually due December 1st and I didn't know that so I missed the application deadline and then they extended it because there was an issue with the portal and then I applied and then it was awesome imagine if there was no issue with the portal exactly so don't depend on an issue with the portal yeah so right now I'm still in Waterloo I'm just chilling and working this summer, but I always have Waterloo on my mind. The difference between Marina and I is that I'm going to be like staying home and going to like a local university, whereas Marina is doing more of a international experience and doing dorms and stuff. And we'll talk about that later. So yeah, like that's just my situation. Nothing special. How about you, Marina? I'm moving across the continent, which we've established <laughs> earlier. Um, you have already moved. I've Yeah, I've continent. already moved with my parents to Seattle for, and I've been here for around three and a half weeks now. Yeah, it's very different already. And it's already overwhelming. And this is not even where I will be staying. So I'm moving to California in a week and a half. We're leaving on oh, Friday man. and we're going to drive up to California Yep. And um, in contrast to Adriana's plant, I'm going to be living in a dorm and it's going to be very different. And my parents will be two hours flight away. So um, I don't know whether I'm prepared for that, but that's that's what's going to happen. So we'll see. (laughs) Yeah. So preparation wise, what have you done so far? Um, in preparation for my university experience, the biggest thing has been shopping because I Mm -hmm. couldn't bring too much stuff from Canada. I just need to get a lot of stuff for my dorm and just so that I can feel comfortable because Berkeley is also kind of in the middle of nowhere. Like you need to drive to like big places like Costco and Target and stuff like that to actually get stuff. So we're just getting all that stuff here um there's also yeah I have a math preparation course and I think Adrian has one too (laughs) um where we have to (laughs) have our (laughs) math experience yeah we touched on this last episode about our quad mastering experience how we really only had like each course was over the course of 20 days of instruction so our math education has plummeted quite drastically in the last year so we're really depending on this math preparation course to help us out there and oh and I also just finished course selection and if you don't know at Berkeley like there's way too many people (laughs) there's so many people Um, that's a public university for you but um, the scholarship that I have doesn't kick in until the second semester so I don't get my class choosing priorities for semester and that's this is just going to make me appreciate having priorities so much more because um, for freshmen you're given a random time in the day for your course selection from 9 a.m to 3 and courses just fill up starting at 9 a.m and it's in 10 minute increments so my course selection was at 12 which is not that bad but I had friends that the course selection was at 3 p.m. and all of their courses were filled and they couldn't get any of their mandatory courses for their major so that will set them behind a little bit but it's good that I did not have that issue. (laughs) That's a little bit (laughs) messed like how are they expecting people like I know they're probably doing that for so like the software doesn't crash but people at 3 p.m. like yeah they have to take a like electives I don't know how they're gonna you know manage but oh um, and something that's super different um in 
Berkeley versus um, just literally just US schools versus Canadian schools. In US schools, you have a lot more freedom in choosing your courses, which could be seen as a good or a bad thing. But like, Adriana, do you want to explain how you got your course selection? <laughs> it's literally zero course selection. Like, I was just like, oh, I'm going to civil engineering. And then around a week ago, they gave me my schedule. And like, I can't change that. Like, engineering is pretty, uh, you know, rigid. But this mm-hmm. is like an honors engineering and usually Canada, like they just kind of give you a schedule and like you just choose electives after. Also, something that's super different is like you we have courses that are mandatory that have nothing to do with our major. So I have to take like an American cultures, American history, American institutions. And our high school didn't have like a push or any non STEM AP. That's just what was offered to us. So I didn't get to really get rid of any of the the electives that I have to take for the College of Letters and Sciences, which is the college that my major is in. So I have to take like a social science, a behavioral science, physical science, a bunch of these random courses that don't really have anything to do with my major. But I would argue that that kind of is fighting for a more balanced education. So mm-hmm. there's pros and cons to that. Uh, the con is that I have to take courses that I don't necessarily enjoy, but I think in the end, I don't know really anything about U.S. history, so since I'm living there, it might be a nice thing to know. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) like I think um, American schools actually have more of like a liberal arts attitude. That's kind of like how the colleges in the U.S. came about. It's more like diverse courses, and then you have like more of a major minor approach. Um, So like here in Canada, like we don't have majors and like minors. It's, It's a lot less common. Here we just kind of have, oh, like your in a mechanical engineering degree and then you can take Mm -hmm. electives if you want but like that there's only around like three to five of them yeah and then in arts programs like you're taking psychology and you can take minors if you want but then it's a lot less extensive in like the amount of like diverse electives you can take and yeah the thing here too is like the major that you apply to you don't get into that major you get into the college that has that major so I applied to molecular and cell biology and I intend to keep that route that's why I say that I'm a major in molecular and cellular biology but technically I'm undeclared in the college of letters and sciences so people that apply to like Russian literature and get in because Russian literature (laughs) is not a very common field they get in and then they can switch right into like physics if they want, Mm -hmm. Um, which is very nice because I know a lot of people that did not even have that mindset. They were going in intending to be a STEM major. And then in the middle somewhere, they decided to switch into like language or arts and that's all in the same college. So switching in a college is super easy. Switching between colleges is a little more difficult. Like switching from Russian literature to like archaeological sciences or something that's in a Mm -hmm. different college for natural resources. So it's a lot easier to switch in the U.S. than Canada. Yeah, for sure. Touching on like my preparation, since I'm online, um, I'm not or I'm not going to be completely online. I guess like my university is operating hybrid, at least from what I know right now. And I'm not going to go to residence, so I'm, I'm just kind of like treating my room and my basement as my residence. So <laughs> I've also been investing in things like a monitor or, you know, a calendar and things like that, but nothing too excessive. Like I don't need to go out and buy shampoo. Um, <laughs> so other than that, okay. I've also been, um, I'm going to start a math course with a purpose. Like I think they started it uh, last year when they realized we might not have a good math education because of the <laughs> quadrimesters. So I kind of respect that. Um, and I guess it's like the whole month. So it just eases like the difference between high school and university. You're on the West Coast, right? Um, mm-hmm. Do you like, how are you feeling right now? Like, what are your <laughs> fears and like emotions um, right now? I have like, a few fears that are all just stemmed from one thing like am I actually independent enough to handle my studies feeding myself making great friends shopping like prioritizing time cleaning my room (laughs) that's gonna be a challenge (laughs) Um, (laughs) it's um 
not necessarily like afraid because I know like I know what I need to do in order to be successful it's not like there's a lot of unknowns in how to be successful there's a lot of resources that teach me how to be successful as well it's just like can I actually do it another issue is I didn't touch on this in an earlier episode but an insight to me is that I have celiac disease so like I can't have gluten I kind of I don't know why I feel like I'm gonna be a party pooper like people are gonna be like oh let's go to McDonald's at 3 a.m I'm like sorry I have an allergy I cannot go to McDonald's with you it's something super small I didn't really think about it but um we haven't eaten out in a, in a really long time. So when we came to Seattle and we started eating out again, I was like, wait a second, I can't have half the things on this menu. Wait a second, we can't go to that restaurant. So it's like something super small that I completely forgot about over quarantine because I would just make all my own food. Yeah, and it's not a pity party. Like I, I it's not like I really want to eat a burger and I can't, like I can make myself a gluten-free burger that's not the issue it's just like I want to be able to have those spontaneous plants um, and I'm worried that that might be a little bit hindered by that also I think that I'm going to be very paranoid because living in a super small city where you kind of know everyone and you know it's safe you leave your bike out in the middle of the street you leave your garage open some doors are unlocked half the time like it's so different and I have to be super careful. I don't know. <laughs> There's this huge meme about Berkeley. Like we have these UC Berkeley warn me emails and I get like three a day, like mugging near this storm. Oh, aggravated assault near this storm. Arson in this storm. Like it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit just Welcome to Berkeley. Up. <laughs> exactly and I'm not even on campus yet that like the first Berkeley email I got was literally uh, an arson email so amazing um yeah it was really great so I feel like paranoia might help me be more safe but again I don't want me being scared to hinder like spontaneity or like making cool memories um so yeah I, I need balance is what I need and I don't know if I can achieve that but I will try my best yeah, like, I guess, like, when you move away, then you realize how many things that, like, you take for granted or just, like, yeah, integrated in your daily routine that, like, get kind of altered or taken away. Mm -hmm. But one advantage I see from that is, like, you'll just be more inclined to, like, make better food choices, make your own food later down the line. And, mm -hmm. like, honestly, I don't think it's going to be too much of a hindrance because, you're going to be more independent anyways. And I don't think you're yeah. going to be like going to McDonald's at 2 a.m. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure like they like, you know, food options are probably more I'll extensive. Just get a, I'll just get a Coke. Yeah. Or or I'll always have a burger in my bag. Like hash browns. Man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hash browns. Yeah. At first they'll be like, oh no, what if, what if, what if like paranoia and I get that too, but then you realize it's not as bad as it seems. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we'll see you next episode <laughs> once, yeah. once, once you're in the dorm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, even if I'm like at home, like I still get like the regular university fears of like, oh, am I going to succeed? Like, how hard is it going to be? Because yeah. like you always hear that like engineering and STEM is hard and like it's going to take time to adjust really like my routine and my schedule because first year it's probably like one of the hardest years just because you're like adjusting so much and so yeah. it's going to be like a really big I'm gonna mind. I going to be able to, to sit down and work at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'm going to be looking out and seeing everyone explore the area. It's going to be really hard to get myself just to kind of ignore everything that's going on, all the craziness and just work. That's going to be pretty hard. Mm -hmm. yeah because Berkeley is like a lot more interesting than Waterloo like I'm not inclined <laughs> to like go out anywhere just because it's so boring <laughs> but at Berkeley like I would be also just exploring the beaches being distracted by like the cool people around me and like I think yeah. it, it like it'll definitely take a couple weeks to just be like okay I'm at school not really on vacation but it kind of yeah. feels like I'm on vacation <laughs> yeah, yeah my brother told really me that the first year feels like summer camp and I'm like I already feel like I'm in summer camp without even being mm -hmm. there yet <laughs> so yeah I yeah like, like that that's just like probably what it's gonna feel like ties into our next point which is like misconceptions of like 
staying at home and like benefits of going somewhere else because when you're someplace new like you feel more like excited and you're excited to like work because you have more people but also like it depends on the person like you might be more distracted by that um like I feel like being at home and especially since it's like half online is nice for just like putting your head down and working but also like can get like really tedious and a lot more boring when you have like that extra free time and you don't have like a new place to explore yeah that was something I was I was thinking about saying but um Waterloo doesn't have great like um uh sciences it has really great engineering um we have Laurier that's really good with business political science arts stuff like that um the closest like really good place for uh sciences for me for biology was U of T so I was going to be moving away either way like that wasn't really an option for me and I don't know even if UW was as good as U of T for biology I don't know if I would be staying I think a part of me always just wanted to see what more was out there but now that I've been here just for like three weeks I miss home so much and I don't know how I'm gonna handle this I think I needed this jump just to push my independence I needed that little bit of push to start putting my life in my own hands and start controlling different parts of my life I think quarantine, especially being stuck at home a lot and being stuck in the same area, it made me really love Waterloo more and made me love my friends more. But I think that it's a place that I would come back to in the future once I have regained my independence. So some people need that jump, some people, including me. And Adrienne is literally already more independent than I will ever be. So, yeah. (laughs) No, like we're just walking around the city and like I don't know finding Tim Hortons and Rena just points the opposite direction I'm like you've been here your whole life there's one Tim Hortons (laughs) Um, we always get lost yeah yeah no here oh yeah here I've already seen a change like I already led my family successfully to a restaurant like three blocks away which was already uh yeah Adriana knows how big of an achievement that is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like your nice. brain just needs that like push. Is that push? Different environment. And yeah, that that yeah. just push. So then you'll see in second year and third year, like you're gonna be at like a different level of maturity that like yeah, even right now, like you can't really imagine, but that like change is gonna benefit you so much once you like need to move somewhere else for a job or like travel on yeah. your own. Yeah, and- that's what I was thinking, like a misconception about moving, staying at home is that you you will never get a new experience. It's mm-hmm. like the summers are free and at UW you have co-op. So you have like three months to discover this new place, this new place of work, and you're actually getting paid. That mm-hmm. is that is a whole new level of independence that unfortunately as a biology major I will probably not experience anytime soon because everyone's so desperate for research that probably not going to find a great paid position in my first or second year but um but yeah yeah. like even though I'm staying home like I chose a place where I'm going to have a good co-op program that I can go to Montreal go to Toronto even maybe go go to uh, California yeah go to California as well (laughs) If you have like a co-op program near you, go for that, like, you know, try it out. Or even if you want to apply somewhere else, like California, like 4,000 kilometers away, do it. Because Mm. during university, like you need to figure out what kind of environment you like, because your hometown may be a great place, but like, you don't know if it's a great place. There might be somewhere better that you thrive better in. And the only way you know that is if you travel, if you work somewhere, if you study somewhere different. So yeah, takeaways, go somewhere new, at least, you know, once during your whole university career, either for a Mm co-op internship or for study or research, because you'll learn so much more than if you just like stayed in the same place your whole undergrad. If you want to go somewhere new and like also, you know, not break the bank, work there, you know? Yeah, I was wondering, like, some people feel... Uh, like this is this is just in conversation with a few people from school at the time of application some people feel like staying at home it ruins your university experience what are your comments on this whether or not you move somewhere else or stay at home you're still being independent so even the studying process you're not 
having time in class to study. Like you have to study on your own, um, read up on extra things to understand the material. So in that sense, you're being independent. You know, what I'll have that's different from Marina is that I won't go to like a canteen or something. I'll just ask my mom to make my food and do my laundry. Yeah. And I think like, if you want to be more independent, even if you're at home, maybe like try making your own meals or doing your own laundry because you are at a stage of, you know, you're an adult. So at that point, like a lot of parents kind of put those responsibilities on their children, like even if they're staying at home, um, but even take it as an advantage, like you're like saving around two or three hours per day, not doing like your laundry or going out, buying yeah, groceries and making up. your food. Yeah. So take that time and maybe like use that to join some sort of club to meet new people. Like that culture is still there in your university. You'll be meeting a lot more people, even in a local university. That's just a hot spot of new faces and new experiences. So don't think that staying at home is just going to be, you know, a blob or a bleh moment. <laughs> um, yeah. You'll have plenty of opportunities to like take over more ownership than in high school, not just, you know, moving somewhere else. Exactly. And moving, moving is just one part of it. After the move, like after the first month, it's going to be exactly like living at home if I was just in a basement. Like I'm still going to have to stay in my room and study whether I'm at home or in a dorm. I'm still going to have to take over some independent tasks like Adriana was saying before. And an issue actually with moving away is like we touched on before, it's going to be really hard for me to like avoid the craziness that's happening with everyone moving to dorms um and if that's an issue for you like being in a super foreign place takes you like a few weeks a few months to get used to um or else you're unproductive or you can't do anything that would be an issue that would be something that you would need to consider for moving away another thing is like during covid i'm sure we've all been exposed to a variety of different home situations and living situations. Um, Adrian and I are very fortunate to have parents that are willing to do our laundry for us if we're really busy or make us some food and bring it up to us when we're really stressed or have a late night studying. And if you feel that your home environment has impacted your studies um, or if money is an issue and you just can't move away from home, there are so many scholarships that if you truly, truly want to, you can find a way to, to do that if you're not getting the environment that you need in your home. Both Adrian and I don't have that issue. So we were very lucky that we could choose whether we wanted to leave or wanted to stay. And something good with the U.S. schools too, they're, they give a lot more financial aid if you are truly on the lower side of uh, family income. So there's a way around it if you really don't want to stay home. And also, it's not a horrible thing. So if you mm. can stay home and you want to see whether that works. Um, like you can you could, study on campus. Um, exactly. Just spend all like most of your time on campus. And there's a bunch of study spots. But also exactly. like since scholarships, you know, are uh, more of a lottery, maybe even choose a co-op program again to because co-op yeah. w- really will pay for like a lot of your degree. Um, yeah. And just research, research, research because those opportunities may be hidden on like scholarship websites or on even on your like school website, make yeah. sure you f- have all the options available and apply to all of them because you never know. Exactly. Yeah. And even if you like, you really want to live in a dorm and, but your like house is like two minutes away from the university, you more like, you're going to have friends who have dorms. You're going to have friends that you're literally just going to sleep on a couch in the dorm room overnight just because that's what's more fun or you need to stay up and work on a project together like those little experiences won't change whether you're at your dorm or at home so yeah yeah okay that was a nice little segment okay so now we're gonna close off with a few questions that we have for our future selves. We're going to be responding to this in a future episode after our first semester of college. And we're going to see how dumb slash super (laughs) smart we are. Um, (laughs) What is a question that you have for your future self? Um, First of all, I hope you passed your first semester. (laughs) Um, And if you pass, say yes or no. And 
<laughs> the next question I have is like, just do you feel like more mature as a person? That's like probably my biggest question. Those are good questions. Yeah. My first question is, did you get a 4.0? Um, the answer is probably going to get be no. Um, or I will just crop this part out if, I, if I'm ashamed. Um, so you don't have to answer that question if you don't want to, Marina. You can skip yeah. it. Anyways, next question. How does it feel to live alone? Does it still feel like a summer camp? Or have you finally started to get the hang of being by yourself? I don't think I will have the hang of it quite at the end of first semester. I think I will start embracing it more. I think it'll feel more real, but I don't think I'll be there just yet. Also, yeah, did you are... get a research position? Please say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please say. Um, yeah, also, like, I don't think I'll be applying for co-op then, but probably. So, yeah, if you got a co-op for the summer that's not, like, at McDonald's, then... <laughs> let me know um (laughs) but yeah those are some really good questions and I'm just excited to see what we respond and like I mean Marina hasn't moved in yet so that's like a whole other conversation we haven't started university I start September Marina starts like yeah I start um I actually move in mid-August because classes well orientation starts um the 19th to the 25th and that's going to be hybrid as well. And then my classes start the 25th. So mm-hmm. it's going to be coming at me very fast. But the thing with Berkeley, if you don't know, if I haven't sold it to you yet, we have a month long winter break. So we have earlier Whoa. start date and later end date, but we have month long winter break and we have all the other breaks too. We have spring break, uh, like reading week right before and after exams mm-hmm. or sorry, just before exams, like it's awesome so I will be enjoying that a lot that is epic I think I only have like a week in between my first and second semester <laughs> but but you also end you also end earlier so pros yeah I'll I like I'll be ending in May and then I'll start my new co-op and I don't know where that's going to take me so we'll talk about that later mm-hmm. um yeah. But overall, I, th- I think this is a really good just s- sort of slash therapy session slash podcast. Yeah. Um, like yeah. this is super valuable for me and I hope it was for you too, whoever is listening very... to this. Oh, it was for me. I don't know about them, but yeah, it was very yeah. useful for me. Um, and to the five people that are listening still, because we're nearing the end, mm-hmm. um, it was very <laughs> fun just pretending that the whole world is listening <laughs> to our <laughs> thoughts. Um, And I hope that seeing like people be publicly worried about university and we're the opposite. We are. I'm excited by how scared I am because being super scared means something super new is coming. So it's different. And I'm glad that we're sharing it. Yeah. Uh, And also it's going to be super weird because we're going to have hybrid classes, both of us. So it's going to be a whole new experience that has never really been shared before. So Mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that as well. Yeah, stay tuned for September 5th. Uh, at that point, I will not be in school. I will start three days later, but Marina mm-hmm. will be. So she'll be yes. moved in. And I think we can touch on like your move-in process in that episode and probably something more. Yeah, I think our next episode is talking about the application process because a lot of people, oh, um, yeah. application just started opening. Yeah, like didn't um, Common App start like today or yesterday? I thought like yeah, Common I, App I, I saw it on August first. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was very overwhelming. <laughs> what I did, we'll we'll share this more next episode. But yeah. what I did, I literally just opened it August first, filled in like three things, didn't open it again until <laughs> winter break because I didn't have time. Um, and then I just applied to all the schools. This this is the reason why I didn't catch the Berkeley due date until I got an email and they were like, oh, it's due today. And I was like, oopsie. And then they extended it. So that's awesome. Don't depend on that. Please be aware of the dates. Like, and even start start early. Right now. Start today. But the thing is with starting early is you're going to be thinking about it way too much if you're putting Mm -hmm. this much pressure on yourself this early. And that's what happened with me. I put way too much pressure on myself right in the summer. And I was writing applications to schools that I didn't even end up applying to, Mm -hmm. like, because I didn't do my research. And I was like, 
do I actually want to go to the school or is it just on the common app and am I just trying to calm my nerves with writing applications yeah. like I so guess we'll like talk- be efficient and um don't just apply out of the blue like just do research and we'll yeah. yes we will talk about this I think we'll just cut that out basically because that's gonna be next episode yeah <laughs> we'll, but we'll talk about that conclusion um make sure to follow gallium pod on instagram twitter and reach out to us um using those links you can dm us if you have any questions about us or the podcast and yes. thanks for listening honestly like and if you're from berkeley please say hi because i have like I know one person and they're my roommate and another person and they said hi to me like three months ago and I haven't really talked to them since. So yeah. So um, make sure to <laughs> I need friends. Hit up Marina. If you see her on campus, be like, I listen to Gallium and anyways. <laughs> okay, um, anyways. Yeah, thanks. See okay, ya. Bye everybody.